So, welcome back to another session, another episode of How To. And today I thought we should really take a look at counterfeit magic cards. Why is that? Well, within the last two years or something, we've been playing in various dual commander events and every now and then, unfortunately, every now and then, I had an opponent who was playing counterfeit magic cards and the sad fact about that was that they were not aware of the fact that they were playing counterfeits. So I thought I will just summarize the knowledge that I have about how to spot counterfeits and share it with you. Very simple. So you might ask yourself now, why should I be worried about counterfeits? Or when should I be worried about counterfeits? And I think the answer is quite simple. Whenever you're not buying cards from your vendor, you should at least think about that if the cards you're buying pass a certain price limit. Now, defining this price limit can be quite difficult because I always thought that people are only investing time and money into faking really expensive cards. But today that's not the case anymore. I have a nice little example for that, which is this very awkward looking Paradise Mantle. And the thing about this counterfeit is, it looks terrible. It looks terrible. You can tell, even if you're not into identifying counterfeits, you can tell that this is not a legit magic card, not an authentic magic card. However, it's something, or it was something around 5 to 10 euros. I think one year ago or something, it was, it was popular and modern again. And what I'm trying to say is, whenever a card is regularly played in a popular format and it's it at least costs a few bucks you should already be skeptical about it so from a financial aspect it's always awkward to waste money on counterfeits you just don't want to do that you want your cards to be real magic cards and that's why we are looking at several tests you can perform in order to make sure that these are authentic magic cards one thing in before if you're still unsure about your card being legit or not. Despite using some or all of the tests I've shown you here, just consult a professional. Your local vendor or someone who is professionally buying and selling magic cards, they should know, they should really know how the card should look like. And maybe they even have some gadgets that I'm not using in this video, for example, a UV light or something like that. So, the first part of this video will deal with tests without supportive items. These are mostly tests that you can directly perform when you have the card in hand, whenever you are trading or buying any cards. And the second part will deal with tests including supportive items. And most of these items are rather small, so you can even think about taking them with you whenever you're planning to buy or trade cards. And last but not least, I will show you some kind of a special counterfeit you should also have in mind when buying expensive cards. So for today's tests, we will have a dummy, the might of the masses. And the very first thing you automatically do when you're buying or trading cards is you take a look at your cards. And while you do that, you should the ones you are about to buy or trade, uh, you should take them out of the sleeve and just have a look at them and touch them. How, how do they feel? Like this, the, the normal magic card has quite a, a matte surface and uh, most counterfeits are much more glossy and also very reflective. If, you, if we take the example from the beginning, the Paradise Mantle is like, that's insane. If you look at it, this one is already, if you see all these three in combination, and I'm sure you always have a, a normal magic card around to compare it, so that should be quite easy. And that's, that's the, ver the very first thing you can do that should already make you suspicious, or not depends on, on whether it's an authentic card or not. But 
we also have to take a closer look on the card. So let's have a look at the font of a magic card. On top we have my authentic Paradise Mantle and Foil. And on the bottom you see the counterfeit. And you already see it looks similar. The print on the top card is generally much more sharp. We also see that in the text box. It's not a direct comparison as my version is from Modern Masters. So there's the flavor text added. But we can tell it's different also if we look at the mana symbols, which is another thing we can or should do. But let's have a better example for that. For example, with my Imperial Edict and this damnation here. So if you compare the mana symbols, this one is much bigger. And also, it appears to be sharper. And then we can also have a look at the symbols, the set symbols. Sometimes they seem to be quite off. Uh, let, me, let me check if I, if I have an example. For example, here is this, I have this mad auntie and there we see the set symbol of Thoughtsies. And again, you see the original print is much, much sharper compared to the, to the fake one. And you can also take a look at things like the power and toughness. In this case, it's quite okay, I would say. But again, you see the original one is, is sharper, although that's hard to tell because it's a foil. So yeah, let's get over to another one and that's probably the, the last one in this section, which is a very popular way of testing cards and it's the band test. So it's, it's very simple, you just uh, grab the card by all four corners and you just bend the card like that from corner to corner. And a normal magic card should be completely fine. Should regain the structure it had without any signs of being bent. And you see that here on the surface on the back side and on the front side. Compared to this Tamagoth, which is less flexible because the card is thicker, you already feel that. And if I do the band test here, I immediately see this one. There we go. That shouldn't happen. You saw that on the original one. Shouldn't be any sign of the card being banned. So that could also give you a hint if a card is legit or not. But I have to say, you should not use this test on any card, especially with older cards. It stresses the card, so yeah, some older cards like reserveless cards, uh, dual lands and stuff like this, some of them, if you receive them, you already see there are, they've passed a lot of band tests already and they look like that and you should probably not do that too often and also I've seen neuro counterfeits that actually survive that test so it's not always the one and only test to perform in order to identify a counterfeit but it's just another hint you could use or another test you could use in order to check if a card is is legit or not. So now we take even a closer look at the card with a magnifying glass. And that's actually a very useful gadget when buying magic cards. It's very cheap, you can get it everywhere on the internet. 
and we will have a closer look with that one at a normal magic card. So the very first thing you can always check is if the magic card has, and I hope that works the way it is intended to, here we go. You see this rosette pattern, it's called. You can check, see it on the back side of a magic card. You can also see it on the front side of a magic card. It should always have this very unique pattern. And you can already see here that the black border and it's the same for a white border. The black border is always printed completely black. Compared to this damnation, let, let's see if this damnation is a good example of what I'm trying to show, and it isn't. Maybe these counterfeits are not a good example, or we would even have to have a high resolution uh, or would have to look closer at the card. Uh, but what I'm trying to go for is that sometimes the black on the border isn't really black, it's just a combination of different colors that makes it appear black. And if we look at our Imperial Edict again, it's actually the same for white bordered cards. So white bordered is always white. As you see here, compared to this tiger, which might also be a bad example for what I'm trying to show. Okay, it's actually white as two, but no. That one is white. Okay, surprising. Uh, because sometimes you also see some... Yeah, the print pattern on the white border. Unfortunately, that's the only white counterfeit that I have. White bordered counterfeit that I have. So I don't have another example here. But... Let's take another look at the font again. So what we see here, for example, if we go back to that example. We have uh, two older cards with the old font. Uh, if we take a look at the Imperial Edict, again, it's very sharp and it's completely white. Compared to the Tiger, uh, I have to say in advance, I don't know, this one should be <clears throat> a, a revised fake, I assume, or revised, yeah, it should be revised, not unlimited. And I'm not sure if you would usually see the rosette pattern on these cards in the text box, but even if the it's grayish, it's not completely white, but I assume that's not the case. I have personally I haven't seen a revised duel from close distance so far. It's a, bit, it's a bit tricky with the, with the glass. But you can see here that there's the, the rosette pattern on the card as well. On the, on the font, actually. And you will probably also see this down here. Uh, the angle is difficult. We can take another example with newer cards. Let's go back to our Paradise Mantle. This one was already obvious without the magnifying glass. Now you see it's even worse if you compare the letters and if we compare the mana symbol 
we can see the same. This one is very clear, clearly separated. The zero is clearly separated from the, the gray circle, while this one is kind of, yeah, it's kind of off. Okay, same goes for the text box again, and also the, the mana symbols you can have a look at again with the magnifying glass. Let's get back to our Thoughtseize here and a Mad Auntie. So again, you see, this one is not as sharp as the original one. There aren't any gaps in the black line. And overall, it looks quite strange. We can also have a look at the mana symbols. This one's the fake one, this is the authentic one. And again, we see the same as with the Paradise Mantle. This one here is very clear. Very sharp, and this one here is, is a bit blurry. But you see how they're trying to copy the rosette pattern. But let's take even a closer look at the cart. And this time we will look at the back side of the cart. Something we, we haven't talked about that much yet. Most often, or the backside is actually very hard to, to counterfeit since normal backgrounds have a very specific color, they have a very specific surface, and also there is, for example, the green dot test you can do. So I hope that we can visualize that on camera because I've tried it when setting up the video and the light is slightly too bright it seems. So I will probably just try to take a photo and show you afterwards. I will just show you a photo here while trying to explain what I'm what I'm going for. Uh, usually you have an, an a violet L form in this yellow spot of the green dot. And that's something you most often do not find on all the counterfeit backsides because that's a minor detail that seems to be quite hard to copy. And then you can also take a look at, again, same as on the front side, how sharp is the Magic the Gathering print on the back side. And also this circle here. Compared to, let's take our Tamagoyf again. Tamagoyf. Yeah, this one. The color is off and it looks blurry again. <clears throat> Something I haven't said so far is that sometimes you also see that people are trying to... <clears throat> excuse me. That people are trying to artificially put some wear on the card, so to say. So uh, this card here has, if you see the white dots here, and also the, the corners are yeah, scratched and I don't know. It, it should, the card should look like it's played and it it has some, it's, it's of age, so to say. Like it has seen some play, but you can tell quite quickly. I think the tiger here has it has it too. 
in order to yeah that's this is I mean I've seen cards authentic cards that have something like that uh, back in the days people haven't played with uh, sleeves and stuff so if you always go on a surface of the cards it can happen but usually like you you play your land like that and you tap it and whatsoever and you don't have a, a play mat and stuff like that it can happen but this this one looks like like a cheap try to be honest but we have another gadget to use and that's a pocket balance so if if you feel like you need another way of of checking your cards Magic cards usually have a defined weight, which is between 1.70 and 1.82 grams. I'll just show you an example here. I have these Might of the Masses. As the name says. And this card here. weighs 1.82 as I just said this one here is 1.79 and another one is 1.81 so they slightly differ but they're all within range compared to this tiger for example which obviously weighs too much and we also have our Tomograve again, which is at 1.91. But what's important to say is that it definitely depends on the edition. It, so, sometimes it even depends on where the card is printed. Since I have these three mutate creatures from a Japanese booster, and apparently... These cards are at 1.64. All three of them. Um, I don't have to go... Okay, so this is 1.67, but it's still below 1.7. And that's 1.65. So it depends on the edition. Um, I can just recommend if you are looking for the weight of a specific card, maybe a reserve this card or something like that, just check and do some research on the internet. There are most often some articles on Reddit, for example, at which people have already shared their value they have measured. Uh, so you, in order to get a feeling, some kind of a range for how heavy your card could be or in, in in which range it it should be so that's that's more of a that's that's a very specific way of of testing your card but yet another method if you just want to be really really sure maybe more more something to to players who are regularly buying very expensive cards, uh, maybe reserve list cards, depending on what format you're into. Um, if you are buying a dual and every now and then, and then you probably do that at your local store anyways, it doesn't really matter. But if you're, for example, if you're buying a lot of cards online, it's yet another met method to ensure that your card is authentic or not. So that's... That's it about our methods. And now I want to show you a few special counterfeits. So I have two examples here. First is a so-called rebaked card. Something you have probably never seen. And this is actually the first rebaked counterfeit I've seen too. Um, it was done with a special set back in the days. And as you see, if you look at the card, the backside looks actually good. Simply because the backside is a real magic backside. Put together with a counterfeit frontside. 
Very simple. The problem is, these cards are extremely thick. If we take our balance again, I can show you this card should be even at 2 grams, I think. Yep. So they weigh a lot, obviously, because it's more paper than usual. Usually. But that's something you don't have to be afraid about anymore today. As I said, it was done with a special set back in the days. And yeah, yet another interesting way of faking cards. The second thing I want to show you before we end this video is actually the reason, the real reason why I decided to make this video. And to me it was a, a sad case. It's this brainstorm. So this the story behind that is we were playing our uh, our dual commander event in March it was this year and one of my opponents happened to have that brainstorm. Uh, since I like these old borders old bordered foils a lot and I have a lot of them. I was very skeptical about that one immediately when I saw the copy and I have the original one here as a comparison. Thanks to him, shoutouts to him for giving me the card in order to show that to you. Um, I was I was actually a bit scared because to be honest, if you're if you're not into these old bordered foils, then this one looks really good for a counterfeit. It looks really good because uh, the old foils always have like the the text box isn't foiled apart from the star, and the picture itself isn't foiled either. So it's just a border, and that's it seems to be quite hard to to replicate that. Uh, but that one was well done. And if you're not into that, you, you look at it, it looks fine. It looks it looks good. Of course, the backside again, if we take a normal magic card, the backside looks a bit off, and you could tell, mm, that's a bit shady. But let's say you, you, you buy this in a sleeve, in some binder or something, and it looks fine. Great. And it goes for something, these days it goes for something like 300 to 400 euros, I guess. And you don't really want to waste your money on something like that. And that's why I said, people need to be prepared for that. Because we play a singleton format, and we pimp our cards in some cases. Maybe you have a pet deck you play for years, and at some point you decide, I, I always love this Brainstorm, and I, and I have this money laying around, whatever. I don't want to put it into some new pimp, I just want to have these original cards. And then you buy something like that on the internet. And boom. That's the result. A sad one, but also a sign to everyone, in my opinion, always be aware when buying magic cards. There is there is no limit for, for counterfeits. That's, that's the, the sad thing about it. I've even seen uh, people playing Kaladesh inventions, for example, counterfeits, Amonkhet invocations. And these all bordered foils. And that's just, that's that's very sad. It makes me very sad. And yeah, the whole thing about this video is just that I hope it helped you to be better prepared in terms of checking your cards and making sure that you in the future buy legit magic cards and that you're able to to identify counterfeits and, and not fall for something like that, which which is, again, a scary thing. And counterfeits are getting better and better, and I hope we will never reach a point in which we are not able to differentiate them from the normal cards. So far, as far as I know, we haven't reached that point, but this video might probably go in the right direction in order to prevent that. So, with that being said, thanks for watching. 
If you have any questions, thoughts and ideas whatsoever, write them down in the comments. You can you can ask me anytime. We will find a solution for whatever you have in mind. Until then, have a good time. Enjoy your games. And bye-bye.